and we are going to be using regulation rules because we want to make sure that you are seeing that we are doing everything legit. Sword and Buckler is a little bit different from the other dual categories. In Sword and Buckler, you only go to five hits. So you need to be using the highest levels of skill, endurance, technique, and speed. Additionally, besides only going to five hits, you can only hit from the waist up. So you see the female fighters are wearing belts that signify how low a hit can happen. We have Aiden and Lord Blackjack, one of our other fighters who's currently healing from an injury, who are going to be refereeing for us doing those counts. And his best two out of three. Crowd, are you ready to see this fight? Yeah! Fighters ready. Referee, time is yours. Let's let him do it, everybody. Oh, you can see Eliza, she's hitting a little bit too low with some of those shots. Oh, but she just ma manages a couple of quick headshots. And the stop fight, stop fight. We had called over here. Who took the round, Aiden? Eliza the Dragon Slayer takes that fight. So our fighters are going to get a full 60 seconds to catch their breath. Ready for round two? So remember, Eliza the Dragon Slayer has taken the first round, so if she's able to win again, she automatically wins. But if Aspen of the Forest is able to win, they will go to a round three. Fighters, are you ready? Referee, are you ready? Let's let them hear it, everybody! There we go, tapping swords, showing their chivalry. You can certainly see Eliza using... Oh, there oh. we go. And it does look like Eliza was able to take back-to-back -back rounds, and she is the winner of the first Jordan Buckley fight. Excellent job, female fighters. We love having you up there showing your... And we are going to be having Sarah the Swift fighting with the classic European-style longsword. So I know that many of you have wondered, which is better, the long sword or the katana? We're about to find that out today. In between rounds, though, I'm going to be talking to Jake a little bit, giving him a chance to be able to describe uh, how exactly they both work, because he actually is an international champion. Having traveled to Europe on multiple occasions, he is an internationally ranked long sword champion, and previously was doing so he made with all his a Western European style long sword. Wow. So I'm going to let him uh, chat a little bit after this, so that he can tell you a little bit about the differences between the two. But are you guys ready for this round to start? Yeah! It's going to be a best two out of three, 60 second rounds. A full 60 seconds where you can hit your opponent anywhere except for the feet, the hands, and the groin. And in our sport, we don't stab because as you may notice, everything that we're using is 100% real. The weapons are real, the armor is real. We leave them blunted so that we don't literally die. <laughs> Fighters, are you ready? Referee, time is yours. And there they go, showing that chivalry tapping swords. Oh, still the swift oh, wow. quick hit, but Jake the Samurai counter attacking. Woo! Wow. Fast hits to the head. Oh, they're both landing strike after strike. Really counter attacking. That is one of the things about both of these fighters. They may not like to engage first, but they're sure going to punish you for it. Taunting each other. 30 seconds, fighters! 30 seconds! Drag this car. 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and round one is over. Folks, I just want you to know that you genuinely just saw some, some national level fighting. Both of these fighters regularly medal in the men's and women's divisions respectively. So you are able to get a really good view of what it is like to see some top level long sword users. So I'm going to hand Jake, uh, while they get their full 60 seconds, I'm going to have him talk a little bit about uh, the different close to an authority on actually making and using these weapons as you can get. Because the sport of armored combat uh, is one of the most realistic versions of combat in this world. Some of you may be familiar with SCA, 
Some of you may be familiar with HEMA. Uh, there are a number of other leagues which are fantastic and we don't look down upon any of them. Many of our other fighters have done Markman, have done SCA, have done HEMA. But if you're looking for that hardcore medieval carnage, if you really want to know what the limits of yourself really can be, this is the sport for you. So that's a full 60 seconds. We're going to go into round two. We do have Jake the Samurai up by one right now. Do you guys think that Sarah the Swift can bring it back? The crowd is on your side, Sarah. Screw you, Jake. Anyway, fighters, are you ready? Referee, are you ready? Time is yours. And they're off. Both being very cautious. Both of them are wearing a lot lighter armor than maybe some of our other fighters, but that gives them that higher level of mobility. Ooh, very nice attack from Jake. You can see the slowest of the faints. Were you able to see sparks on those hits? 30 seconds left, fighters, 30 seconds left. Fantastic combinations. 15, 14, 15, Come on, go! 12, 11, go, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and round 2 is over. So before our next fight, the train man like always, and otherwise we have O2. So both of these gentlemen are using what's called a grand... Ah! Ah! Very excited fighters, we love it. They're both using what's called a grand falchion, the bane of both armored knights and horses alike. If you're able to come up against an armored knight, this could crush through armor, chop off straps or limbs. Or if a, a knight was mounted, you would dodge the knight, swipe at the leg of the horse, and send him flying. <laughs> so we are going to be doing two 60-second rounds. We are going to have you all help us decide who wins. Are you guys ready for these fights? Yeah! All right, fighters, once again, two 60-second rounds. Please make sure to stay on the stage, please. Fighters ready? Referee, time is yours. There we go, big hits with those weapons. And they are swinging full force, folks. Those weapons weigh about three and a half pounds of solid steel. The edges on those are roughly three millimeters, so not very uh -huh. at all. Thirty seconds. Thirty oh! seconds. They're getting tired, folks. Let's let them hear you. Big hard hits coming in, punching their opponents, slashing with those big weapons. Oh, very nice dodge from O2. 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and round 1 is over. back on their feet, uh, if you could take the chairs off, because they need all the space that they can get. Fighters, are you ready? There we go. The fighters are moving around the entire stage, folks. <laughs> all right, fighters ready? Referee time is yours. And let's let them hear it! Nice feint with that kick, getting into a big hit. Whoa. 
You can see our two giving up the old rowboat. Oh, big punches in the face with a big hit in return. The fighters are starting to get a little bit tired going this hard, folks. Let's let them hear your support. 30 seconds, fighters. 30 seconds. 30 seconds. Remember, that's Trey the train man in the Mongolian kick and O2 in the Western European. 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and round two. Comment after that fantastic fight. I like violence! He wants violence! Oh, two, any comments from you? Wait, Ozu, we still need to let them decide who won. All right, referee, show them who are we cheering for. Do you think Trey the Train Man won? Oh, two. All right, that's a clear one. Trey the Train Man is the victor. But obviously, still a fantastic round from O2. And you can see the great camaraderie that we have on this team. So makes his way on stage. Great sword. So you can see from the, the difference with the long sword versus the great sword, mostly comes in the handle. So the blade is actually a very similar length from long sword to great sword. Of course, there are a few inches difference, but you can see that the uh, handle itself is actually almost twice as long. That difference in leverage is what ultimately gives them the greater ability to land hard hits, do spear moves, half sword, and all the other types of uh, great sword techniques. In any part of the body except for the hands, feet, and groin. Fighters, are you ready? Referee time is yours. Crowd, let's let them hear it as they go into this great sword fight! <laughs> And of course, having the chivalry, letting their opponent know they're ready. I need to get out of here. The reach on these things is, is very, very long. As you can see, both of these gentlemen are, are near masters of this particular weapon, and they're not even moving much slower than that uh, longsword in the previous fights. The big difference that you see, though, is they have to use bigger sweeping movements. The momentum by the end of that blade is too great to simply stop a strike mid-swing. 30 seconds, fighters, 30 seconds! Ooh. Mike, watch yourself as well. All right, crowd, count it down with me. 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And round one is over the stage. Our fighters are too powerful, folks. They keep moving the whole stage. All right, fighters, are you ready? Crowd, are you ready? Yeah! Referee, time is yours. I'm going to start from across. Oh! And they're pulling a trick on us, switching weapons. Looks like Jake is using the Astora Greatsword. Oh, big hit. Grant has to check how to use his hands. He's not well practiced in the art of the, the Eastern sword. Woo! Big hits coming in. 
Jake is well versed in the use of the Western style uh, greatsword, so this does this does put him in a little bit of an advantage. Ooh, big hit on the side of the face there. Thirty seconds, fighters. Thirty seconds. Oh, big speed coming from Jake, able to land a counter attack. Fifteen, fourteen, thirteen, twelve, eleven, ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and round two is over. Wow. You can see our fighters are getting a little bit tired now. Their heads are ringing, I'm sure. Which is not weird, as you might imagine, wearing 70 to 90 pounds of steel on your body while doing moves that people would do out of armor and get tired. All right, referee, let us know who won. And Jake! <laughs> But as you can all imagine, that was a very close fight, and we are grateful for what they were able to show. Just show it to them. See? It's not that hard to Dark Souls roll. Oh, two. Show them your cartwheel. Show it to them. The one you've been working on. I chose the wrong fighters for the segment of the show. <laughs> greatest Showman, are you back there? Greatest Showman! Mike, the Greatest Showman, we need you! The Greatest Showman, we need you now! Is he gonna sing? Let me see that one two step. He's hiding, folks. I'm gonna bring him out later. He's one of our best cartwheelers in armor. We're gonna jump into our next fight, though. We are gonna be moving on. One thing you may have all noticed is that we do not automatically make the females fight each other in every fight. The reason being is that the females greatly benefit from being able to fight with the males. Um, as you can imagine, there is somewhat of a power and size difference normally, though in Eliza's case that is not necessarily true, being one of the larger and stronger female fighters in the country. But by all of us practicing together, we're all able to get better together. And that's one of the tenets of the Salt Lake City Crusaders. Alright fighters, are you ready to move on? Crowd, are you ready for this long sword duel? Yeah! 